I love it. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome. He's, he's going to be here. The first episode, actually, this will be the second episode of the new year, but to the women's fittest chick chat edition, we have Melissa Brodsky, Kira Newman, and Brooke Walker with me today. So excited. How was everybody's holidays? Awesome. I'm Go. glad it's over, though. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I think we're all a little bit like, I don't want to say antisocial, but yeah. you your routine, right? Yeah, exactly. Like I, I was just in California and I actually, uh, my dad's birthday is on Christmas. We celebrated it. I was supposed to be there for New Year's too, but I was like, I'm trying to do my routine somewhere else and it just doesn't feel good. So after Christmas, I came home. Yeah. Just like, I want to get back to my stuff. Girl, I get it. I went home for Thanksgiving and I told my family I'm not coming home for Christmas. It's like one or the other. Yep. So I like lounged all day on Christmas. It was nice. Brooke, where is home? Where is your like family for you? Is it in your state still? Yeah. So I, I live in Arkansas and my entire, well, my family is in San Antonio, Texas. And then I have part of my family is in Florida too. So we're kind of all over the place. But typically on Christmas, I'm, if I'm home for Thanksgiving, I'll stay in Arkansas for Christmas and kind of vice versa. If I stay here for Thanksgiving, I'll go there for Christmas, but it's one or the other for me. Absolutely. You just get, you get tired of like dressing up. Food is weird. Like you're like, do I have to bring food? What is the food going to be? Am I going to be faced with a bunch of desserts? <laughs> for sure <laughs> yeah I mean like it's so like obviously you can do like whatever if you want to follow your plan follow your plan if you don't you don't but for me like the hard part isn't the actual food that's there it's you know the the talking about it it's like I just want to just like live however I feel like living and I don't want to explain it to you like oh my god I don't know over and over again, explaining the exact same routine to everybody. I totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, no, you know, I cannot have that. Like, I cannot have a bite. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to like be rude. You don't want to be like, yes, if I want a bite, I can have it. Like, you just want to take the bite. You just want to yeah. enjoy the bite, you know? Um, Isn't it during right? Thanksgiving? I don't remember. If I, Go ahead. During Thanksgiving, I, I don't remember if I talked about this last time, but. Um, there was a relative of a friend there um, who, like, she was asking me about my, my training and stuff and, and what I do. And, and I told her about it. And I explained that, like, I'm in off season. And she was like, oh, okay, so you can, you can do whatever. And I was like, well, you know, with, within reason, like, up, up to me, yeah. And so whenever anyone would eat something or she would eat something, I would eat something, she would go, it's okay. I'm not in training. Oh, and she kept saying that like all night. <laughs> and eventually I was like, just to be clear, I am still training. I just don't have to diet tonight if I don't want to. And she shut up. So <laughs> like, I didn't want to get to that point. But I was just like, <laughs> do you feel like, so this is, and I'm like, I'm not even on y'all's level, but I, you know, I know enough about the sport and I always feel like I would much rather, you have to prepare yourself to talk to somebody about the sport who doesn't know anything about it versus like, I love talking about it to people who are involved in the sport. It's the people who don't know where you're like, you don't know what kind of questions you're going to get. Like, this is a weird conversation. It doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to them. And I don't think it's kind of like people asking for fitness advice because they know you do it, but they're not going to incorporate any of it. So you're just like, why are we having this conversation? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> Bodybuilding mm -hmm. is not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Yeah. You guys, I was just going to share this. I saw this quote by Jordan Peterson. I thought it summarized the reason I do this podcast pretty well. It says people organize their brains with conversation. If they don't have anyone to tell their story to, they lose their minds. <laughs> uh, this is why I do this. So I can like work out all the thoughts in my head. Yeah. 
So with it being the new year, I wanted to talk about resolutions and goals and stuff like that. So I was kind of on Google looking at resolutions and I don't know, you guys can probably guess, what do you think the number one resolution is that people make for the new year? Commit to the gym. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's weight loss and exercise. Yeah. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, what some of y'all's goals are. I don't know if you do resolutions or if there's things that you want to leave behind in 2021, but, um, and then some of the, you know, tips that we can give people going into the gym and just starting out or starting again, as some people are, because <laughs> Maverick wants to. <laughs> it wasn't mine. It's mine. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> So great. So great. So did you guys make any, um, any resolutions or goals for this year? Or is it just kind of like keep on track with everything? I definitely always make resolutions, but mine are not even fitness related. I have like mine's last year and going into this new year is always like finances. I'm like, let's pay off some debt. Let's start saving up some more money. Um, so this year I kind of like took it upon myself to save x amount of dollars per month and i did it so that's like i'm gonna follow that same routine going into this new year you know so i i'm always convinced that at some point in my life you know because i'm self-employed you know so at some point i'll be like your walmart greeter whenever i'm like 70 years old <laughs> i'm gonna be doing that because i have to <laughs> so i'm like trying to save so maybe i don't have to do that if i do do it it's because i want to but yeah. it's probably not the case. I'll be the Walmart greeter. That was my, my, my number ones as well was to do financial stuff. We were poor for so long after my divorce, like on government assistance and everything. It got to be really nice to be able to just be able to live and spend, you know, like, oh, you want to go for a coffee? You want to, you know, go away for the weekend, whatever it is. And so now I'm like, oh, but also... Again, I don't want to be 80 and being the Walmart greeter. <laughs> you don't want to have to be the Walmart greeter. You want to want to be that. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Now, my, mine's also financial. I mean, I have, with many things in my life, I do this thing where once I have like a couple weeks of like, like where I'm like kind of struggling to keep track of stuff, I'll let my emails build up. I'll start ignoring my, my statements and everything for my, my cards and like, not like, I'm like, okay, not, I haven't gotten a notice. So I must be fine. And then I won't look at it. And so I definitely like a resolution of mine is I bought a budgeting book. I'm going to sit down and look at all the things I don't want to look at so that I finally feel in control. Cause I know that, you know, finances like that, creates that creates a lot of stress in all areas when personally when I don't know what's going on but I let that happen so my resolution is to get in control of my finances and therefore my life absolutely absolutely Kira what do you got well I don't actually like like consciously make them but if I had to make one it would probably be one, stop picking my face. That's always a resolution for me. Um, and two, um, I don't know, I'd, I'd say like probably, well, yeah, definitely um, make myself or my workouts more of a priority and getting in like actually doing something instead of just like sitting on my ass and being lazy. <laughs> well, and training, I mean, I train people, so it's like, you know, like that. But that, those would probably be my only two that I consciously always like run through and try to do. Kira, you know, that's totally relatable because once you, you know, you're not into like having a goal of competing or something like that, you know, and with me too, getting older, it's always been an adjustment of what my training is going to be. And that was kind of my thing for this year as well. I feel like I'm in a good place with Anna where I could focus more on going to the gym again. And so I have, you know, that routine set up and I, I have like three days on one day off, two day on one day off that I'm doing now. And I have a program set up for myself so that I hopefully will keep on track with everything. But um, yeah, I mean, it's tough if you don't have to, um, 
he had to figure out a different goal, you know, and part of that is just, you know, it's easy to maintain. I always say that it's a lot easier to maintain than it is to try to progress. Mm -hmm. I mean, people sit on their butts and maintain what they've got all day. You know what I mean? It's the change that and the effort towards that, that takes a lot of work. So yeah, finances is good. Sleep is another one going to bed on time. I don't know. Do you guys struggle with that at all? Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know I'm so much more productive in the mornings, so I like to wake up early, but I also want to get enough sleep. So if I go to bed at midnight or 1 a.m., I can't wake up early, and then I'm not productive, therefore, I must go to bed by, like, 10 p.m. That's easy. I used to do it. I just got to get back to it, so mm -hmm. read on that one. I'm like a granny, so I'm like 9 p.m. I need my full eight hours. I could lay down on the floor right here and be out in like 60 seconds. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing. And I sleep so heavy. I'm like, I walk in my sleep. I talk in my sleep. Sleep. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I just bought today. I just bought a uh, diphenhydramine because I like, I used to sleep like a dead person. And ever since like the last two months of my prep this year, I, I can't sleep. Like I wake up like three times throughout the night. So diphenhydramine and melatonin, and I'm knocked out. There you go. I've never friend. heard of the, I've never heard of that diazohydramine. That's but, but I'm the same way. Like, you know, before a show, those last two months are so, well, one, they're so critical. And then it's like kind of asinine because then you, you need to get sleep, but then you can't for so mm -hmm. many reasons. So I feel like most people probably suffer with that. But um, yeah, it's, it, sleep is, we get up at like, sometimes she'll get up at like 3.30 or 4.00. No, we get, but I typically get up at like 4.30. So yeah, going to bed early is like, but I'm like you, Brooke, we're like grandmas. We just, we go to bed early. Even on the weekends, everybody's like, what are you guys going to do this weekend? I'm like, uh, sleep. What do you think? <laughs> when, I was, else. <laughs> when I was in college, like living at College Park, I was going to bed at 8.39, waking up around four. Like oh that my God. college life. You know, I didn't. Yeah. So I was a granny in college. <laughs> I get so excited if it's like 8 30. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm in bed already. I'm pumped up about <laughs> the small things. This is, why, this is why Brooke and Kira were Olympians, Melissa. <laughs> there. Brandy time. Yep. <laughs> we don't do anything else. We just sleep and train and eat, and that's about it. Sounds like good life. <laughs> It's a good life. I do agree. There's nothing better than, I, I don't think there's anything I love more than sleep. Honestly, there's, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so true. I mean, there's, there's nothing I love more than like being on that, on that routine. You know, like mm -hmm. it just feels good and everything clicks and you're just going and doing it. Like that's what feels good. Yeah. I think that's something that people need to remember too, when they're trying to make changes. It's like, when you, when you start doing like a routine where you're doing healthful things, it, when you deviate from it, it's kind of like us talking about the holidays. This is different from our normal, you know, our lives are down, we have a routine and that's when, you know, problems start to occur when you don't feel good about yourself is when you deviate from what your body wants to really do with those healthy things. Sorry, I'm playing ball with my dog. He'll just bark if not. He's this dead. The deaf one what he does. Not. Is it the deaf He's so one? cute though. He's so cute. Oh, there goes my thing. <laughs> so, so one of the biggest things I think that people think about when they think about uh, weight loss with New Year's resolutions is that they're looking for like, um, like quick fixes and like magic pills and powder. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's like, yep, for sure. <laughs> well, <it's, laughs> the, the funny thing is like the stuff that you can do to make changes to your health is like, are always like the low cost things. You know what I mean? Like going to bed mm -hmm. on time doesn't cost you anything, you know, which is probably the number one thing that people need to do, you know, in order to feel better about themselves and have the energy to exercise and all that stuff. But 
you know, a gym membership. I mean, a Planet Fitness membership. I have a Planet Fitness membership. is twenty It's twenty dollars a month. You know, like who can't afford that? Yeah, I thought it was ten dollars. What the hell happened? Well, you can get. A, <laughs> you know, like the cost of eggs. Boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> through the roof. Brooke, Brooke, how much are you struggling now that the price of eggs is like three times? Oh my gosh. Okay. So <laughs> when then it's not egg related, but I went to what Bath and Body Works a couple weeks ago and they do the buy three, get two. Well, it's now buy three, get one. And I was oh. so upset. So oh. upset. Like everything's going up. I can't handle That's that. Awesome. I know it, it was always happy. buy three get two free like since they started mm -hmm. oh I'm so offended I'm so now offended it's not by that. <laughs> it's really funny. everything is like oh my gosh it's crazy our, mm -hmm. our rent our rent went up over a hundred it went up a hundred and ten dollars a month damn I know crazy. we're gonna be homeless again <laughs> <laughs> we have room here if you want to come down yes <laughs> <laughs> got a gym too so perfect hey I, i'll tell you I see twenty dollars a month too for my gym <laughs> I, well oh, we yeah. had an increase um so we offer child care at our gym and we had to increase our child care rate because everything is going up like the cost of our all of our sanitizing wipes it's all increasing and they put a limit on how many sanitizing wipes we can order at a time so it's like we can mm -hmm. order you know, m within multiple days of one another, but so it's like we're calling every other day to order our allotted amount of sanitizing wipes. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Yeah, we have to buy. I buy through Amazon for the wipes, and like I remember when the pandemic started, the wipes were like so hard to find. Number one, and number two, it was just so expensive. And you, we even now, it's like we just go through so many, of course. But you have to have them. So yeah, they are yeah. expensive. During, I was thinking that during lockdown, a bottle of uh, Lysol, I saw it on Amazon. It was like $110 or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And toilet paper, of course, for the toilet paper mm -hmm. hoarders. Couldn't find rubbing alcohol anywhere. Out of sanitizer. Mm -hmm. People were making their own sanitizer, so there was no rubbing alcohol. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what a time. Making hand sanitizer. Like, people have a tub full or something. That'd be hilarious. I was in West Virginia at the time, so... Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Ooh, going to West Virginia. Dig on West Virginia. No, I'm not playing. <laughs> I've only been there. I actually did a bodybuilding show there one time. Because, um, oh, what's his name? Eric something. Frank Hauser. He's a pro. And I don't I don't know that he did a whole lot with it. But anyway, um, yeah. he had a show. And I don't know if they still even have it. Anyway, I won. I'm not bragging. But uh, <laughs> driving through there, I was like, oh, this is really strange that West Virginia is having a bodybuilding show. Like, cause it wasn't, there's, it's not, there's not a lot. Oh my, there's not a lot there, sir. Quiet. But yeah, so West Virginia. It's pretty though, it's pretty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think about um, uh, the movies. Have you guys ever seen the movies Wrong Turn? They're like horror movies in West Virginia about like, they're about like inbred, like people, killing people. <laughs> in yeah. The yeah. I actually love those movies. I know I'm one of those odd people, but yeah, I've seen have all you, of them. Have you guys ever seen the wonderful whites of West Virginia? No. no. Google it if you haven't, because it's a documentary <laughs> and it's like straight up Appalachia, sir. And it's like, it's so crazy. It's, it's, it's wild. It's a lot of inbreeding and it's the story of kind of the story of that. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's a good one to watch. If you're it's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine living in a society where like, like everyone knows each other and is related also? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a I'm historical thing though. Over. Like it, they've been doing that for generations. So it's like to them, it's like normal and it just keeps on, you know, pass, getting passed down, but you know, I think that's kind of like what they know, all they know kind of thing. Yeah, all those genetic mutations. Mm -hmm. Oh, little baby. <laughs> Did Maverick have a good Christmas? 
he was at um, a kennel or a, a boarding place. And I hear he enjoyed himself, although he has this cut on his nose that's healing. Yeah, they at first, I didn't know they were going to crate him. Like it, it's, an, it's a whole open place, but I guess at night they crate them. And he, like they sent me a picture and his nose was like completely raw and open. And I was like, oh my God, like, like my, like, I, I don't know what to do. And I looked it up. They said it's called crate rub, mm-hmm. which is, can be separation anxiety. And my heart was broken. Oh. And I called them the next morning. They moved him to like an enclosure called a run. So oh. then I think he had time after that. Yeah. But my, yeah, so he had. The- my little boy, he does that too in his crate when we're. At, at work and because he's deaf so he like he'll just bark because you know but he does that with his nose too he'll uh mm-hmm. kind of rub it and it happens but I know yeah. it sucks I mean I, I don't crate him yeah. so I think that was like scary for him they they said it was like when they let the other dogs out and it wasn't his turn oh. he would like do that. yeah <laughs> <Poor guy. laughs> we're all like hmm. poor thing yeah. <laughs> oh my word. I'm jealous of all y'all's dogs. We have our bunnies, but I mean <laughs> Hey, a bunny is way easier to take on a plane. I'm trying to figure out how to get him on a plane. Emotional support. Yeah. He has to go through like six months of training, which I guess I might as well do, but paperwork has to be legit. I looked up mm-hmm. all the like it, like what you can get away with and it's it's hard with the dog this big to get away with it without training mm, yeah so, i'm gonna do that so you guys what are some let's talk a little bit about um you know some uh what are some of the mistakes that you see like women making when they're starting out um like with their new year's resolutions and their fitness journeys um let's talk about like some I don't know. You want to talk about training stuff that you see in the gym first? Social media. Women are terrified to lift. So it's like, Mm -hmm. it's all cardio based. You know, every woman will say, oh, I I don't want to bulk up. I don't want to get too big. Or I'll get a lot of girls who are like, no offense, but I don't want to look like you. I'm like, okay. "Mm -hmm. Okay. You You never will. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Or people come in committing to like like six days a week like you're not going to go from zero days to six days are you insane Mm -hmm. yeah so like I would say if you're doing this on your own without the help of a coach and you're joining a gym you know two days a week of like full body or an upper and a lower or maybe three days where you alternate upper lower upper um would be a great you know place to start um (laughs) <laughs> yes. you, and maybe in a month you'll end up looking like Brooke but I mean I don't know right. <laughs> I well I definitely think a lot of people and not just necessarily women I think men and women do this they bite off more than they can chew so they go from like mm-hmm. one extreme they're super lazy they're not active and then they're like I'm going to train every day I'm going to do an hour of cardio every day I'm going to eat perfect drink my water sleep and I'm like well, you're probably not. And that's why you're going to fail because you need to start small, you know, do something that's realistic for you and your schedule. And if two days a week is good for you, and if you're not exercising at all, two days a week is going to be a lot better than what you're doing right now, you know, but even if you like talk about all the, if you have a list of the things that you're going to change, like I'm going to go to bed on time. I'm going to drink, you know, hundred ounces of water a day. Um, I'm going to, you know, make better food choices every day. All you do is, you know, oh, you know what? I didn't get all my water in today. I'll work on that tomorrow. If the problem is people think, well, I'm not progressing if I don't do all the things. And then like you said, Brooke, they give up and it's like, you know, all the things you need to do work on doing your best at, and then, and you'll kind of see, you know what? the sleep thing is the hardest thing for me or whatever. And you'll be like, well, that's the one I'm going to have to work on. Cause these other ones are coming a little bit easier to me. There's no shame in like not being able to hundred percent follow all of these changes that you want to make because behavior change takes 
time and, and effort. So, you know, put your effort towards the ones that are coming easier to you. And then when you get those things nailed, then you can start working on the stuff that's more difficult, you know? Yeah, I was just talking to my little brother who he was like really into training over the last year and for the past few months he hasn't and he's lost you know he put on like he was at like 190 and now he's like back to like 180 or something um and and he said to me he was like I just can't get back into it like I I just don't want to do it like I I want to want to do it and I said you know like you're thinking that you have to you know go six days a week or whatever or five days a week but just go today because you want to go and you feel like it today. And then tomorrow, if you don't go, that doesn't mean it's ruined going forward. It just means you don't go tomorrow. And the next day you might feel like it again. So go, like, take it today. You're going to drink that water today. You're going to go to the gym. And then if you don't continue it, it's not like the cycle's broken. It's just, I didn't do it. Like I didn't go to the gym or do cardio yesterday. I'm not off my game now. I just didn't do it. And today I did it. Yeah. Yeah, tackling one. That, that, that's not going forward. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think people look at how far that they have to go rather than looking at what they have to do today because mm-hmm. all the days are going to add up to this goal that you have. Like I had said this, I, I, think, I, I think I tweeted it that, you know, it's a lot easier to be healthy than to get healthy because getting healthy, it's like, it's indeterminate. You don't even know what that is, but being healthy is doing all these things on a daily basis. So that's really what you need to focus on. And then, you know, I would be measuring progress in some way so that you can see how you're progressing, whether it's with pictures, whether it's getting stronger in certain lifts, um, you know, the scale is definitely a tool that you can use for sure. I think, um, you know, if you don't have a <laughs> Brooke, I remember you talking about, I just thought it was really cool. Even somebody as a pro who says how much she hates the scale during prep because it, it really messes with your head sometimes. It 100% messes with me. And I just, you know, you look at yourself and it's like, I don't know why we always have some sort of number in our head. And I don't even know how I get this number that I come up with, but, and I weigh, I use, I weigh every single week. Now it's only once a week, you know, but whether I'm in season or off season, it doesn't matter. But even then I'm like, what the hell is going on? You know? And I just try not to get my head about it, but it's crazy. And I tell people that like, even people that you think don't struggle with those things, they do struggle. It's just how you kind of deal with them. Like if, if my weight fluctuates and I'm up a couple pounds, I'm not going to say that I'm not like thrilled, but I'm also not going to let it ruin my day. Whereas some people they'll step on the scale and they're like, Oh, I fluctuated. I'm up a few pounds. And it's like, it's slippery slope. You know what I mean? They're like, well, screw this. Why even bother? So they Mm -hmm. eat anything, everything, and they throw everything out the window, you know, instead of just being like, Oh, it is what it is. Who knows? You could have not slept enough, or maybe you had a little bit more sodium in your diet that you're used to. So, I mean, there's so many different factors that could have created that. And I'm like, don't let it ruin your day just because you are up a little bit, you know? And here's the thing, you actually could probably look a little bit better, you know? But you know how people are, especially women. <laughs> right? You might have put on some muscle, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't like, matter. Yeah. Up. yeah. Yep. And I, like, I'm like right now, like I'm just I just started like I'm 28 weeks out from my show I'm just getting like today getting back on like strict plans obviously I'm not cutting yet um but just like getting my stuff together but I I checked in yesterday and I got on the scale I'm like I know I'm putting on muscle I'm aware of that I'm also I also put on a lot of fat I have you know water retention and everything and it's just like I have to take like a deep breath I'm like all right it's just the number that my coach needs to compare to my body to see what we need to do. That's it. Like, it doesn't matter to me what the number is and there's no reason to, to lie about it, to act like it's not there. It's just the reality right now. And I intend to see that number come down, but then again, I'm putting a muscle right now. It could still go up next week. 
and I'm just going to have to deal with that and keep doing what I'm doing and then eventually watch it come down. It's, it's hard uh, to attach a worth. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, what am I worth today? <laughs> was, I, <laughs> was I good? Like, it's, it's really tough. I know we, I ended up the year like on a super high weight because of my period. Like I was up like five pounds up and then, you know, and then I was like, all right, I'm going to be really strict and careful about, you know, cause I was like, I definitely don't, it was like two days ago, you know? And so then I'm like, okay, I had a really great day. Like I got my workout in, I did a little bit of rowing. I did a little extra cardio, you know? And then I would like weigh myself the next morning, exact same number. And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I was so mad. But today I'm down like three pounds because my period is dissipating. So it's just like you, even if you try to do everything right, you still really can't control that, that scale number. You can't. Yeah. Well, and I think a lot of times too, and usually like Americans, we want like instant gratification. So like one day, if you did really good for that one day, you did all your training, your cardio, you got your water, you ate perfect. The next day you look like a totally different person like a 24 hour transformation. It's crazy, you know? So I always try to reiterate to people, I'm like, it's probably taken you weeks and months and years to get to this point where you're not really happy. So it's gonna take weeks and months and years to get mm -hmm. to a point where you are happy with your physique. So it just takes time. And unfortunately, we're just not patient. I mean, I'm not patient either. I just know that it's gonna take time, you know? Like you're not, but like you totally are because like you, you've been doing this and, and you have that. Like I tell myself that too. I'm like, obviously I have some sort of patience where I'm aware this will happen. So I keep doing it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we know the payoff, but then I think about that initial time that I did it. The, the very first time that I prepped, I didn't know what to expect, but it was exciting and it was new and I was seeing progress. So that like, I guess that ingrained in me that, with patience, with time, with the discipline, it will come. So mm -hmm. you say you're not patient, but somewhere in there. It is. Yeah. Definitely right. are. We all are. There's, um, you know, that saying about how like progress is not linear. I think that's a hundred percent, which is kind of why, you know, like if you're doing progress pictures or something, when you compare, like, even if you're doing them weekly, compare your first month of one month to your, your first week of one month to your first week of the next month, you should be able to be able to see progress at that point. But yeah, from one day to the next, I mean, this is why, you know, you'll have people say like, oh, you look like you lost weight or something after you put in like six months of, <laughs> you know, of work because, you know, it takes that long for people to see stuff. But yeah, I think measuring progress in different ways is really important and not just checking, like you said, Brooke, daily for... <laughs> Like I did everything right. I was like, I can't really undo the last two weeks of eating holiday crap and having a menstrual cycle in one day, but I tried. <laughs> but I tried. A for effort, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. So, um, you know, uh, I was going to say, you know, we get so much stuff on social media talking about like, uh, how the government is like, um, telling us to like, people are saying, oh, I wish the government would preach more about like how people should be dieting and exercising rather than like the things they're talking about with like the vaccine and, and all this stuff like that. And I was thinking how, if everybody's new year's resolution is to like exercise more, um, people know this already, right? Like we don't yeah. need the government to tell, <laughs> you know, I mean, it would be nice if they were mandating things like regular exercise and whatnot, but you know, people just like their, their routine and their habits, right? It's like, it takes a lot of effort to make a change. So I don't know. It, I was just thinking about that, how it's like, no, people know that they need to exercise in order to be healthy. They know this. Exactly. Well, an argument to that would be, yes, people might know that, but what you see is what sits in your head is what you make conscious effort about. That's why, you know, that's why media focuses on certain things. It's to focus people on certain things. Yeah. So if, you know, if 
they were preaching exercise, proper supplementation, right, the right foods, that would, you know, that's what people consciously think about. But, you know, everyone knows exercise is good for you. But the majority of people outside of our industry and people interested in the industry are not sitting there thinking that exercise and food are the key. They're thinking that, you know, what they see is going to make them better, even though what they see really, in my opinion, is makes certain people money. You know, that's, that's the point. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah. And our own health, our own exercising and eating right doesn't make much money for anyone else. So, right, it would probably put that industry like behind. <laughs> it could take money away from them. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if people are healthier, there's going to be less, you know, less need for pharmaceuticals. Yeah, it's frustrating. Um, one of the things I was going to say too about the the scale fluctuating as well. I, I think a, a really good tracker for people to incorporate is to monitor their step count every day because um, just knowing what your activity level is and noticing like how much it fluctuates also has bearing on you know things like the scale um, you know I with my job on my work days I'll walk like sometimes 15,000 steps in a day and if I don't go to the gym or I don't work a day like I could be like two to 4,000 steps because I'm really not doing much of anything. So if you eat the same amount on the day that you did 15,000 steps and went to the gym versus the day that you didn't do any of that activity and you got like 3,000 steps in, um, obviously the scale is going to be up the next day as well. So monitoring these variables and finding consistency in all of them, I think is really important. Or even if you don't have consistency, then at, at least you're able to problem solve when you are trying to like track your fitness. Do you, I don't know. Do you guys like track <laughs> steps or do you? <laughs> Hi, Kira. <laughs> Sorry. I, my stupid iPad started to die and I was like, I gotta go get, find my, this is terrible. No, anyway. I, I've personally never tracked anything. I don't, I've never tracked my macros, my calories, my, I, I've, I attempted tracking my, my training, but it just, it doesn't, I, I find myself progressing without writing it down. I don't track my steps and I, I understand how tracking certain things with like a Apple watch or something can be motivating. Yep. It's just never done it for me. Like it, it is I've tried to do it. I, you know, I got one of those macro apps, but for me, it's just like, if I stick to the plan, why mm -hmm. would I have to track it? It's an extra thing to do. It's an extra thing to get in my head. Yeah. I just keep, keep moving, you know? That's how I am. Like I've always tried to, I've, well, in the past, I've tried to use like my fitness pal or something. And to me, it's a pain in the ass. I'm like, I am not going to keep up with this. It's just like one extra thing that I have to remember to do. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. So for me, I don't, yeah, I don't track anything, but again, like I've kind of been doing this long enough that I know what I need to do and I know when I'm off and when things aren't working, but so for me, no, I can't it's too much. <laughs> I completely agree. I don't track any of my macros. It's exactly kind of like Kira just said, you've been doing it long enough where you know, if something's off, like no one has to tell me, oh, Brooke, you've kind of been off your game. I myself will be able to tell you, yes, I have been off my game or my eating hasn't been what it should or whatever the case may be. But I'm an obsessive person. So if I try to like count my macros and keep up with it, it's just something else that I'm going to like stress myself out about, you know, and especially from like a prepping standpoint, whenever you're prepping for a show, I think you're already in your head about everything and you're so critical of yourself. So if I have to keep track of my macros and then I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I will pick myself apart. I think it'll just like, I'll self-sabotage, you know? So I just mm -hmm. rather not do it. Um, but I understand that some people for them, it might help them, you know, and if it helps them with their progress and that's great, but I think it's just really person dependent. You know, I know if I'm doing what I should be doing from a training standpoint, eating standpoint. So I'd rather just not deal with it. I'm putting it in so much yeah. <laughs> well, 
and I think we talked about before for the most part, like a, a lot of us eat the same thing for our meals. So there isn't really any point in tracking, but if you're somebody that wants to have, you know, variety or, you know, to learn about the nutrition information of food, I think that it could be very helpful, um, especially at the beginning, because you don't have the intuition. You don't know, you know, you don't know what you're eating. So learning about it, I mean, yeah, learning about it ahead of time, I think before you, um, if it's new to you, is probably going to be something that you find helpful for sure. Yeah. It definitely blows my mind. Um, when I talk to people sometimes who are, you know, totally in a different world and they literally don't know what is a carb, what is a protein, what's fat. And I, I get that that's something that you have to learn, but it's just, it boggles my mind. I understand if you don't know how many grams of carbs there are in a slice of bread. I get that. But if you don't know. Like what are some good like examples I, of proteins or something like that? Yeah. yeah I mean, I, it's good. I think, and I completely agree because you, I'm sure you guys can all relate, but like people will come to me and they'll say things that to me, I'm like, oh, that's like general health, right? Like you would assume that for the most part, most of our population would know the difference, but a lot of people don't. And I actually think that this kind of goes back to like schooling, like education. If they would put more of an emphasis on health and nutrition, whenever you're growing up and like in grade school, you might not be living in like an obese country because- the United States is, we're obviously overweight and I'm in Arkansas and I, I love the state of Arkansas, but I'm pretty sure Arkansas is like one of the number one most obese states in the U S and, and it's pretty evident. Like if you were to walk around and just kind of look at people in the state, you would be able to make that assumption, you know, but I think it goes back to grade school. They don't value health. They don't value exercise, you know? And I'm not real familiar with like PE is now, but it seems like it doesn't really even exist in school, yeah. you know? And that's upsetting to me because I look around and I see kids, especially that are like consumed with social media, their phones, their tablets, they don't want to go outside. And that concerns me, you know, because I think, what is it? It's just going to progress from here and get worse. And we'll live in a society with more disease and more infection. And it's just, it's a slippery slope. And when the only motivation for any version of health is to be praised for it mm -hmm. on social media, that is, that's terrifying because yeah. when you don't yeah. have that praise, then what? Exactly. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. You know, Anna had told, she was, a, she's a junior in high school this year and um, she was getting her class schedule and I was like, you don't have gym class. And she said, they don't do gym class after a sophomore year, you know, and she was taking, they did a, like a six week of like weight training. So I was all geeked about it. I'm like, what are you like, what are you learning? Like, what are you doing? And she's like, he just lets us loose in the weight room. Mm -hmm. And like, there was no <laughs> supervision at all. She's like, I showed some people how to do like lat pull downs and stuff. I was like, all right. <laughs> I'm like, do I need to come in there and like teach some shit? Because I was like, <laughs> yeah. So it was like literally like just let them loose in the gym. Like, no, I'm like, this would be a great time to. And I know there are schools that do that. I I remember I interviewed um uh I forget what her um it's a lucky penny. What is her name? Um Ashton Penny. She's a wellness pro. And like, she grew up in Texas and they had like huge weight training programs and stuff. It was, and they incorporated weight training. She learned how to like squat and bench and deadlift, um, with her other sporting events and all this other stuff. And I'm like, that's fantastic. Like, I think the Midwest just kind of sucks. Like, <laughs> not going to lie. <laughs> you know, I was born and raised in Texas and luckily I would had somebody take me under their wing, you know, and I was in the weight room since I was 12 years old. And so they did advocate that. Um, I was in like PE and we call the athletics up until my senior year of high school, you know? So I am lucky, but 
I, I don't know really what they do now. I have no idea. I couldn't tell you, but I just think it's a major downfall within our society. And obviously you look, look around and see how many issues we have with disease and obesity. And then that creates other long-term effects, you know? So I wish they would put more of an emphasis on it, but I mean, I have no idea if they will. Well, it's, it's crazy to me to think about, like we were talking about the, the, you know, bare minimum or the minimum effective dose. I mean, honestly, three days of 30 minutes of brisk walking can make an impact on your health over the course of a year. Like that's pretty simple, you know, and, and that's like the bare, the bare minimum, you know, I mean, this is why I, I do like step tracking because I mean, I'll do that a lot with my clients at the beginning. I just want to know how active you are. And that like some people do sit at a desk all day and like literally, you know, 2000 steps in a day. That's like nothing. That's like no movement at all. It's, it's crazy. And we're just getting more and more, um, sedentary, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And the jobs are more stressful. So by the end of the day, you don't really have the energy to go to the gym when going to the gym would help, you know, with some of that insulin, insulin resistance and, you know, clear out some of the cobwebs and make you have more energy. So it's like this cycle too, of you have to put in the effort to feel better in order to feel better, to have the effort to put into feeling better. Like it just... <laughs> goes round and round it's true um and you never regret a workout once you do it you always feel better like 100 percent of the time you feel better afterwards even if you went into it feeling like crap even if it was a bad workout but it's getting there and yeah i get that especially when like for people who don't have to leave their house their houses for work to then have to leave the house to go to the gym if that's not something that you like to do because I know people like to go to the gym on their way home from work yeah it's easy yeah. they're already out you just stop and or I know going. people who, exactly who, who like who if they don't bring if they forget their clothes for the gym then they just go straight home because mm -hmm. they don't have their stuff I've had clients cancel on me for that reason I didn't bring my clothes to work I'm not coming in you know uh so I that's yeah it's tough it's effort for sure. Mm -hmm. There's I have to do that to me and I'm like, uh, I'll go next door and I'll get you a pair of shoes and a full outfit to try. You can't <laughs> cancel me for that. Or you know what? Right yeah. Yeah. Work out one of the I don't care. <laughs> or you could take my clothes. Yeah. I'm like, you will not get out of that. Mm -mm. <laughs> there's, a, there's always an excuse, right? You can yeah. always find an excuse. Like Brooke and I were talking just before everybody got on about how cold it is and how dark it is and how... <sighs> you know, we're having like, we have like nine hours of sunlight right now. And so after a work day, you know, I think Melissa, you had said to me, you were like, the key is to get to the gym when it's light out so that you, mm -hmm. it's not dark when you're going and you feel like you're going to the gym in the middle of the night. So yeah, I mean, that was one of my resolutions was actually setting a time every day for me to go you know, I mean, you've heard that phrase, like bosses don't cancel. So I'm like, this is in my day. Like I'm going at two o'clock every day. Um, it will be sunlight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most of my work is done, but I'm not too tired at the end of the day where I don't have energy for my lifts. And I like it because it's not too busy at that time. And I've had, you know, three, I've gotten three meals in at that point. So I know I have like a good amount of energy, but you have to, you got to strategize and figure out what works for you, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. What else? Oh, let's, let's talk a little bit about, um, some of the things that, um, women, I think that you see like women doing, um, so Brooke said that they don't like, people don't like to lift heavy. So I think effort is like huge, right? Like putting mm -hmm. effort into, um, making it hard, I guess. I don't know. I think people don't like to be pushed past the point of discomfort. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, obviously you don't want to push to the point of like pain where you're hurting yourself. You know what I mean? But there's obviously a difference. And a lot of times I think we're just lazy. Like I, I can say that a hundred times, you know, 
And I understand that you might work out and there might be some workouts that are better, better than others. I get it. Like there's been times that I've gone to the gym and I'm like, maybe just done enough to get some blood flow. It wasn't my best workout, you know, but I legitimately enjoy like being pushed to the point of discomfort, you know, where I'm going until failure. And I think a lot of people just don't, they don't like to do that, you know, or they don't understand that they can do more. You know what I mean? Like your body is capable of so much. And I have a lot of women that they're there and they're going to show up on me, but they truly believe like they can't do more. And I'm like, you can, you can do more. You've got this, but they truly believe that they can't, you know what I mean? So a lot of it's just like, if you yourself believe in yourself, you'll make it so much further, you know? Yeah, And and then I, I think it goes, it goes beyond belief where, you know, people really do have like a, a pathway in their brain that says, discomfort is a bad thing. Yes. And we know that discomfort means progress. It's a good thing. And you literally have to build that into people's minds. And and Mm -hmm. I think that just the conscious repetition um, and also obviously seeing the progress helps. But if you just tell someone and then they experience it, they're going to have to experience it often and probably won't even make the connection until the progress happens. And so it, I, I mean, I, it, it makes sense. Like same with changing any habit. It sucks. Like you have a habit that you think is negative or that you want to switch out and you know that it's like, you've, you've heard it's bad, but the connection in your head tells you that this is what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You have to like consciously think about it. I've been like creating I like these steps in my head to like turning habits on and off. I haven't written down yet. Um, and like, oftentimes it's, you know, the first step is like realizing you have a problem, like, you know, w- with anything. But for me, I decided the first step is acknowledgement. I do this, this thing. Then the next step is figuring out in what scenario do you do that thing? After what, during what, before what, when does that thing happen? And then you have to like, think about that. And now that it's in your head, the next time you do those things, you'll know that you're going to do your habit. And then like, you slowly become more aware. Mm-hmm. Then you can implement the changes. And like, it's a really long process. <laughs> but the important part is the acknowledgement. Yeah. I've been thinking about this a lot. <laughs> I have a lot of things. <laughs> I have a lot of things. And we all have stuff that we want to undo, right? Like we all have, we all have bad habits that we know things that need to be changed or whatever. And I mean, Melissa, you're absolutely right. Acknowledging, figuring out why you're doing something and then replacing that, you know, behavior with a different one. You are, you know, these are newer neural pathways that you're creating new, new neural pathways so that these are behaviors that are regular to you. And you know, and it's very easy to fall back into what is comfortable. This is why, you know, people stay in bad relationships. This is why people don't quit their job when they hate it. And, you know, it's like, we just like to be comfortable, which goes Mm -hmm. right back to what Brooke said. It's just like, you don't, you don't want to find that discomfort point, but you know, we know that's where the change happens. I actually have a girl who doesn't like to sweat. How about that? Mm, mm-hmm. mm. and I'm like seriously and we don't in the summer we don't have air conditioning in our gym it's just like a warehouse style and so <laughs> that's always fun she's always bitching and I'm like I'm like sorry but with this, that's what you came to do right it's just it's, it's just funny to me because I'm like wow oh, you chose the wrong place it's a sweat box ah! but yeah so that's one of the yeah but like you said some people just don't realize um, just how strong they're or what they're capable of doing. And they don't want to go past that, what they know. And, and you, like, you know, you have to be like, okay, you're capable of doing this or at least trying it. I think that's always yeah. my battle with them. I'm like, just try it. You know, if you can't do it, then we won't do it. But yeah, they just don't believe it. It's okay it. to fail. Like yeah. I tell you, it's completely fine if you don't get the weight, but let's at least attempt it. You know what I mean? Like get a feel for it. And just because you don't fail, does it, or just because you fail at the weight doesn't mean you're not still progressing. You know what I mean? I think people have to differentiate that, you know, 
And oftentimes, like if you don't accomplish something, people see that as failure. And that's really not necessarily the case, you know? It's a, it's a big figuring, figuring it out because you are like, you know, if you're doing something, you're doing an exercise and you like, you can do 15 reps, like three times. Okay. We'll bump it up 10 pounds. And if you only got five, I think it's like, people will freak out like, Oh, well, that's not within the rep range. It's like, okay, but now, you know, like that you can do more and you're starting from a lower number and you'll work up to getting into that rep range again. It's just like, there's a lot of scared, like I'm doing it wrong or, you know, like trying to be by like the rules of something. And it just, it's figuring, it's just figuring it out. But like, I think measuring progress through strength is really, really important for women, Mm -hmm. like seeing yourself getting stronger. You know, I think one of the biggest things that people focus on when they're coming with, with these resolutions is everything I can't do, everything I want to cut out, everything I shouldn't do, rather than focusing on like this more abundance, like I want to get stronger, I want to build muscle, I want to eat healthy food, and I can eat more food. Um, I want to get more sleep, I want to have more energy, like turning it into a positive makes it look like such a much greater life than if you're like, well, I can't have that. I shouldn't have that. That's bad for me. You know what I mean? And I think that's what people focus on a lot. So then you're like living this negative life, you know? Right. A you, lot of- you, uh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I, you need to think of it as you, I think we talked about this before, Deborah. you get to do these things. You don't have to do these things. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. I I think a lot of times we put like negative reinforcement instead of a positive reinforcement. Just like Melissa said, you're, you're choosing to do this. I'm choosing to eat this way. I'm choosing not to eat this way. Doesn't mean I can't. It just means I'm choosing not to, you know what I mean? Because you have goals and maybe, maybe you don't want to have that as your cheat meal. You know what I mean? Maybe you're saving it for something else that you want, you know, or maybe you're just excited about the progress you've had and you don't really feel like you need to have a refeed meal, cheat meal, free meal, whatever the case may be, you want to continue to progress. And maybe for me, sometimes it's like, if I have a cheat meal, it might like, it might trigger something and I might be like full out binge fest. And then I'm like, what did I do? You know? So sometimes for me, it's like, it, I'm just better not to do it, you know? Cause I might like black out and eat everything. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> That's totally me. I'd be like, oh, once a week I get a cheat meal. And then it would take me forever to decide what I wanted because I'd be like, oh, I want this, I want this. And then, you know, and then I'm like, man, this is such a hassle for me to try to make this choice. I'm like, this isn't even worth it. But then inevitably I would find a way to make it happen. And I would eat. And then I would just like, yeah, go down that rabbit hole of like, oh, well, since it's my cheat meal, I'll just add to it. And I'm like, okay, three hours later, I shouldn't still be eating, but whatever. Yeah, I so I know. But yeah. I, I remember, um, one of the interviews that I had with you, Brooke, talking to you about if you've ever cheated on a prep and you're just like, uh, yeah, who, is, <laughs> like, who hasn't done that before? Like, right. <laughs> I mean, it's so crazy because you feel so guilty afterwards. Like you lose control. And then I'm like, and I have to remind myself it's okay. And it's not like you're cheating all the time. I'm not saying that that's okay, but it's, it's, it happens. Like you might have a moment of weakness. Maybe it was a stressful day. Who knows what triggered you at that point. But then it's like, Oh, I, I quit the next day. I'm like, look at how much weight you put on. you like, and I really haven't changed. I might have some like water retention, but I'm like, well, I might as well not prep anymore. It's done. <laughs> not competing. Do you guys have any trigger foods that you, I think this is a good thing to talk about too. Um, I want to talk about kind of setting up your environment for success, but are there any, like, I always call these not an option, like foods around, like, do you guys have anything that you just can't have around, um, like either during prep, um, during prep or just maybe in general that you're just like, if I want that, I'll go buy it. But if I have it, I'm going to eat it. So I'm not going to keep it in the house. Like any nut butter. be like that. <laughs> any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think when I first started competing, I was definitely like, oh, don't have that in the house. Oh my gosh. Because I was like such a newbie at it that I didn't really like know how to just be a 
be there, you know, without like thinking about that food. And then as I, you know, kept competing year after year, it got easier. And I was just like, okay, I don't, I don't care. I don't have that temptation. I'm on this plan and that's that. Like I have matured into it is what I should say. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm, I'm the same way. Well, I mean, what? <laughs> I said Kira's rock solid. She's better uh, than all the rest. I wouldn't say that. I didn't say I never really, you know, but all right, all right. Look at this. <laughs> Lisa, go. I mean, like one time, obviously it's easier, like when I've like lived on my own and like had you know, literally just my stuff in the fridge and the pantry, or whatever. But even like, like I'm home with my dad right now. Um, once I decide that, okay, we're on plan. It's kind of like robotic. Like that's, you know, yes. now I've had times in the past where I've had issues where it's like, like I, I've had like eating disorder stuff where, mm-hmm it doesn't really count. I mean, honestly, I was binging and purging, you know? And so aside from that, I only ate my food, but aside from the eating disorder stuff, like when I decide like I'm on plan, there's no, like nothing else really gets in my head. It's not like, "Mm, I can have one of those. Cause it's like, that's not on my plan. That's not what I'm supposed to have. Now, of course I'll, you know, switch out chicken for turkey you rebel and won't tell (laughs) (laughs) you know (laughs) sometimes sometimes i buy 96 lean turkey instead of 99 (laughs) stop it's it's the fats it's the when you're getting lean i Mm -hmm. twice during um during that prep, I don't remember which prep it was. I think it was that I ended up not doing, but I was, it was peanut butter. I just was like, I can't, I was like, how did, how did I just inhale half a jar? It's the extra crunchy peanut butter. I love, like I could even have smooth peanut butter. No problem. The crunchy peanut butter that I just went. Does that do it for you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So crazy. You know, I'll tell you, I can be around like chips and desserts and none of that stuff bothers me, but mine's like peanut butter too. So I, and that's like, I struggle with that in prep because I'm like a tablespoon, like defined table, you know what I mean? A table, like a little it's more. A spoon, it counts, right? So I have to like pre-portion all of that stuff for me and I leave it at the gym because I know I won't cheat there, but like. I, this is not a lie. So you guys know how I said I sleepwalk, like I have done stuff and I don't remember doing it. That's happened mm-hmm. before, you know? So like, I won't eat anything else, but if there's some peanut butter, I might eat all of it and not remember it. <laughs> Ever record yourself? I should. I, should. <laughs> I need to set up some vid- uh, some cameras so I can see what I'm doing at night. You probably don't want to know. Brooke's like watching herself. What am I doing? (laughs) Like, stop. No, don't do it. Don't do it. It's over. Game over. Oh, that's so great. That's so great. Um, Well, you know, one of the things that I was going to say that I think is really important with women, with their training, with trying to, um, I think, focusing on like four or five exercises in a workout and doing three, you know, three to five, including warm up sets, um, just the same thing to really focus on movement patterns and getting a good tempo going so that you can really connect with the muscle. I see a lot of people just going through the motions. Um, it might be too light. It might be too heavy when it's too heavy, you're not connected to the muscle. Then you're doing like you know, you've seen the people doing like the full body heave curls, you know? mm-hmm. <laughs> which is great because it's a full body movement. <laughs> a compound. What the? No, it's not. What? No, it's CrossFit. <laughs> then you're. <laughs> but uh, we I mean, no the guys that. tend to go too heavy, and the women, I've seen them doing rows, and they're just like 
you know, I don't know, like a factory worker just checking, like, I don't even know. Like, it's just like uh, an slot machine. The pearl. Slot machines. Yes, well, slot have, machine. Yeah. Have you ever spotted somebody doing a wrist curl? <laughs> it is. Like, a, like jerking like, off. Oh, is that inappropriate? Probably. Oh, <laughs> uh, I can't undo this. <laughs> don't. Oh my God. Is that what you're talking about, Brooke? Yeah, 100%. I've been asked to do that. And I'm like, are you kidding? So <laughs> look at me. I go to the gym and I'm sitting there and it's just this, you just have to know the guy. He's an odd one, an odd one, you know? Is this so for there. a particular it's website? like a dumbbell and I'm like looking around like, I can't even believe that this is happening right now. You know, what am I going to do? If you drop the dumbbell, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to, you're just going to drop it. You know, you it's like do force reps, like just lift it for him. So you can it <laughs> Looking around, I'm like, this is so embarrassing. What is happening? You know, and then I'm like, this is a joke. Did somebody like put him up to ask me this? It's crazy. That really did happen. I feel like that's happened to me, but it was for like a website, you know, and that was like part of the, the shoot, you know? No? Yeah. yeah. Get- Curious only fans. <laughs> No, I, I just I just did a shoot and the the photographer like in October or something the photographer had us posing so that this girl was spotting me doing a curl a seated curl uh, and like it's just not <laughs> like it just doesn't look right because why would someone spot me during a seated curl but she's just like sitting there like like <laughs> underneath <laughs> she Vanna why did you <laughs> You're like, this would oh. never happen in the gym. These are scenes that would, <laughs> these are deleted gym scenes, basically. Exactly. <laughs> Our old, my old gym had a wrist curl machine, Brooke. Ah, <laughs> See, we need to invest in that. We get one of those for that guy. Just a shake, <laughs> just get a shake <laughs> Shake yeah. weight. Yes. Somebody, seriously, somebody brought one to the gym and it was like, you know, we had a lot of fun with that, of course. Um, and somebody left it at our gym and we were like, this is, this is awesome. But I don't know. I don't think anybody ever technically used it seriously. So that, that was comforting to know. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, you know, <sighs> just a little shake, babe. <laughs> I talked to my dog like he knows what I'm saying. <laughs> Does he know sign language, Kira? Does he yes. know sign language? I do sign language with him, mm. but he still doesn't listen, <laughs> sir. He has no off button. Like he could play fetch for like 24 hours. He, he literally won't start. I mean, and then he'll bark at me if I don't play. He has me right there. <laughs> yeah, he does. But yeah, we, I, I do sign language with him. Yeah. Um, I always want to do more and he's very agile. So I need to like work on agility stuff with him. Ah, resolution number three. Hello, <laughs> sir. He's driving me nuts now. Oh, um, I was gonna ask. Uh, oh, do you guys think this is like one of the, the the biggest things I think I hear like women worried about um, burning calories, measuring calories that they're burning, and um, you know, sweat and like being sore, being like. Those are like the three things I think people measure like a good workout with. Do you think yeah. like you hear that a lot with women? Yeah. And I always tell people like, just because you're not sore, doesn't mean that you didn't have a good workout. And also like one of the, like the sweating thing, um, you know, people they're like, Oh, well, how about if I just like walk the dog for my cardio? I'm like, yeah, they're, and that's what they'll be like, well, I, you know, I'll sweat. And I'm like, well, I sweat when I eat. So that doesn't really count. And you're probably not making any progress if you're just you know, shoot. So yeah, like I think if they think that they, if they, sometimes it's like a mixed up thing. They think, oh, if I, if I sweat, I'm making, I'm doing something. I'm like, no, not really. I mean, you could be like putting the dishes away or something. No, nobody else has that problem. Dang. I'm getting I old. Don't up. sweat. I'm really 40 now. So, you know, I, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> no, I'm like the biggest diva because like, I hate to sweat. And I, I, that's like when I got into weight training, like skipping the, you know, like I was a big cardio bunny and then I would be in the gym and I was like, holy cow, I don't even, cause people always used to comment too. They're like, how does your yeah. makeup stay in place? I'm like, I don't sweat, you know? And then if it was really hot, like 
start sweat and I was just like oh gosh it's hot in here because I'm actually sweating like this is crazy the middle of the summer or whatever but otherwise yeah you're gonna put on a winter coat just to start sweating in the gym like I'm a hat. in like nervous situations that's when oh, I yeah. yeah like a job interview or something I'm like oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true it takes me a while to sweat but once I start to sweat it's like done deal <laughs> <laughs> Once I get to that point, but it takes forever. I'm the person I complain every single day in the gym because I have to wear like a hoodie. I'm always cold, you know? And Me I'm too. like, the heater on, you know? Yes. <laughs> it's crazy. I hate being cold. I do too. <sighs> Time to move. <laughs> I, know. Mm-hmm. I know. I was telling Brooke, it's like 18 degrees out here. Yeah. When you're- when your nose hairs freeze because you're breathing in the air outside and your lungs are like, this air hasn't warmed up yet. Like it's still <laughs> it's still a cold. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> it's awful. It's awful. Yeah. Uh, well, I just, I mean, I just want to point that out because I think people like I, it annoys me, the calorie trackers or the trying to figure out how many calories. Again, I mean, it goes back to the, all that math. It's unnecessary math. Like, well, how many, because you can say you burned off 3,500 calories and it doesn't mean you're going to lose a pound in a week. Like there's really no, you know, all you can do is be consistent with stuff and, you know, you should be, you know, headed in a direction and, you know, be seeing yeah. over time, but yeah. Well, you know, some of those like, okay, so Apple watch, you know, I don't even know if some of those calories are accurate because no. the very first time I tried that, I basically mm. should really reconsider how I train because <laughs> I felt like I didn't burn any sort of calories, you know, and again, it's, I guess it can be more person dependent. Like if that helps you and it just makes you feel better. Yeah, go for it. But for me, I'm just going to roll how I feel. So like, I obviously know if I'm pushing myself to failure, I know if the workout's good. So I'd rather just not even give myself something else to freak out about because I will freak out about it. I mean, just like looking at the scale too often, if you, which again, like has so many variables to it, same with Mm -hmm. the calories burned. Another variable being, is this even accurate for me? You know, why even put that in your head? If you're yeah. seeing progress in all other ways. None of those are yeah. accurate, especially like, you know, the cardio equipment, because that's what people ask. I'm like, that's not accurate. You know, cool if you want to look at it and, you know, use it as a measure of, you know, tracking stuff, but it's not accurate because it doesn't take into body, you know, consideration, like the body composition. Um, you know, it's just a very, end- like, it's like the BMI, you know? Yeah. Um, I learned, I learned. So- in one of my college classes, they said that for like the mm-hmm. standards for, for the treadmill were set by a study done on like a group of uh, college age students at some college yeah. way back. And that's what they use for the calories burned on all, yeah. all cardio equipment. So what does, totally. does that mean? Yeah, that's, it doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, again, if it helps somebody do it, like, like Brooke was saying, you know, yeah. if it helps you it's all individualized. So if it's something that keeps you on track, at least, at least knowing that you're burning some sort of calorie and uh, then, you know, that's fine, do it, but just know that it's not going to be hundred percent accurate, that you're probably burning more than what you think. Well, it's not going to make or break you. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I think people like it, it, we focus on things that they don't need to, there's like, it's pretty simple when you break it down, like what you should be focusing on and people, you know, it's like, they're like, well, should I be eating organic or can I eat soy? Or, you know, it's like, you're asking a lot of outside variable type questions. It's like, are you eating mostly whole foods in your diet? Are you drinking enough water? Are you going to bed on time? Are you managing your stress? Are you, you know what I mean? It's just like all these other little things aren't going to make that much difference unless you're, you know, two weeks out from a show or something like that. That's when you mm-hmm. really start getting into the nitty gritty. But, you know, if your goal you is know, fat loss. It's really like, I think people just overcomplicate thing. Like the whole idea is actually pretty simple, you know? And I think people 
are their own worst enemies because mm -hmm. everything's so complicated and it, it blows my mind. I know mostly you had said this too, when people are like, you don't track anything. And I'm like, no, I don't track anything. You know, I have a plan and I follow my plan. And I, I mean, if I'm progressing, I'm progressing. If I'm not, I know why typically, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just think people overcomplicate every little thing that they can, they overthink it and they sabotage themselves. Well, and this, this is a perfect segue into what I wanted to say next. And that is, you have to have a plan. You have mm -hmm. to have a plan. You have to prepare meals ahead of time, or you're going to eat whatever is available. You know, you have to know what you're going to do. You know, is it leg day when you're going into the gym? Have some stuff written down. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact, but if you walk in there, first of all, you, your confidence drops if you don't know what you're doing. So have something written down that you can check off and say, this is what I did, or I did three sets of these five exercises or whatever. It doesn't, like you said, Brooke, it doesn't have to be complicated, but if you just say, oh, I want to get healthy this year. Well, like, what the frick does that mean? Like, you don't have a plan, you know? <laughs> what the frick? <laughs> mom mom i'm so sorry i've already dropped the f-bomb i think and you're like you're so nice about it you're talking about masturbating and we're just like <laughs> oh no Shh. <laughs> tell no one Chi -chi, tell no one um bent on the ball i do have a goal of taking anna to the gym twice a week she's like so uh She's very sedentary because she does all the music stuff, you know, it's just, it's just not her thing, but she always jokes about like, she's got like bigger legs and she's like, do I look sick? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, it would be so easy for you to put on muscle right now, going to the gym a couple of times a week. Like, I'm like, come on, like you could have yeah. guns. You could be, you could be huge. <laughs> Yeah. Why don't more, why don't more kids like want to, we have, we actually have quite a few kids who come to us, um, high school kids and I'm, I love it. Like, why can't more kids, why yeah. don't they do like, why wouldn't you want to look like a badass in high school, you know, and look right. like you just anybody up like, hello, why? I don't know. I don't get it. But like the kids that do come to us, they're awesome. They look, they look great. They're disciplined. And, you know, I wish I would have done more of that in high school, you know, but I, it, it keeps you out of trouble too. I think it keeps you on such a good path of, you know, yeah. and gymnast. So I always say like gymnastics is what forged my like discipline and also getting into bodybuilding. But yeah, like if I had done that and also you competed like super young too. So like, I'm jealous of that. Like I, I wish more people, more kids would do that instead of. Yeah. I mean, I definitely, I mean, I, I was lifting before I started competing. I was, I was lifting. I started lifting when I was like 12 or 13. Um, Crazy. and I actually, I am looking for on my phone. There's like pictures. Oh, of don't me. Stop, keep looking. Like, like every, I, everyone like thought I was like jacked then like there, there's a picture of me like flexing like my traps. And then like, and, and I look back at these pictures, I was tiny mm -hmm. and, but I remember people call me like Manlissa, not in like a mean way. Everyone respected what I did. But um, this football player, my friend, he would like, I would like, you know, brace myself. He would punch me in the stomach. Like it was like a whole thing. It was like a thing. Yeah. And then, you know, I started carrying around my ISO bag and my jug uh, when I was 16 and started prepping. Um, but I, and it's, it's hard to do because I mean, if more people did it, it would be awesome. And I went to a very athletic school. I went to uh, McDonough in Maryland and everyone plays sports. Now, bodybuilding is not really something that like everyone understood. Even teachers who were coaches were like, are you okay? Like you're eating your own food. Are you okay? Some <laughs> kid called my ISO bag an anorexia bag. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. It's <laughs> But, you know, people like let me do what I had to do. I could, I ate my meals in class if I had to. Um, but it was, it was strange to people. To, to, and well, the reason I thought of that is um, when I was like freshman, sophomore in high school, that's when I partied. 
I drank on the weekends. I, you know, blacked out, didn't know what I was doing, all that stuff. And then once I started prepping, you know, the, the parents all thought I was like bad kid. And then their kids were the bad kids. <laughs> I didn't do anything <laughs> junior, senior year of high school. This just made me think of like, well, first of all, I think we all had something in it. Cause I remember the same thing. I was a swimmer since I was like five, but I would sneak into. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. I <laughs> she's all geared up. That's amazing. We all like, like I would sneak into the weight room before swim pra- practice and like bench press and stuff like that. You know, when I was like in middle school, it, it just was like, this feels really good to push this weight around and be strong. You know what I mean? And like, I grew up on a farm and we were slinging bales around in the summertime, bailing straw and everything. So, you know, like that, what is, here's my question for you guys. Like what did bodybuilding, I mean, it freaking changes your life, right? And every aspect, you know, I mean, I know you guys wouldn't be on the pro level if it wasn't for it, but like, like Brooke, what is, what has this lifestyle brought to your life? You know? Um, well, so I started lifting whenever I was 12, you know, and for whatever reason, it was just a major turning point in my entire life, you know? So I remember at that time, his name was coach elder and he's my powerlifting coach. And, um, I remember him just introducing all the lifts to me. So like a barbell bench press, barbell squat, and then obviously a barbell deadlift. And to me, it was so rewarding. My max on my bench was 55 pounds. (laughs) I'll never forget it, you know? And it just like, every time I was in the weight room, I always wanted to do better. You know what I mean? So that was just like in seeing my body change at such a young age and seeing my strength increase was so amazing to me. It was so rewarding. Um, and I think it just continued throughout my entire life because when I tell you that I've been training since I was 12, I've been legitimately weight training since I was 12 years old and it carried out through my entire you know, grade school experience all the way through college. And obviously I'm still continuing it to this day. And I just love it, you know, and I think everybody responds better to a routine, regardless of what your goals are. So being, starting at such a young age really instilled a lot of habits for me moving forward as I've gotten older. Um, so I'm beyond grateful for it, you know, and it's just, it was, it was a major turning point in my life. And that's, it's, pretty awesome because I can tell you that that coach at the time probably had no idea what he was doing but he truly changed my life forever you know so I'm very very grateful is that somebody that has like does he does he know who you are now you know so I don't know if he does um but you know there's still coaches that keep up why my high school a basketball coach I still talk to him you know via social media so that's pretty neat um and at one time he had sent me a message and he was like I can, this all makes sense. You know what I mean? Like everything that you're doing is completely what I would have imagined you to do. You know, I've always loved sports. I mean, I ran track. I was a cheerleader, power lifter, basketball player. I loved it, you know, and still to this day, I, I love sports. You know, I'm very, very competitive, um, probably like too competitive. So like, I'm like bowling. I'm the world's worst bowler. Terrible. <laughs> really really bad and it makes me so mad because I'm like why can't I do any better than this you know what I mean everybody else is like kicking my butt and I I can't even make it to like a hundred you know (laughs) old like like a 57 a few weeks ago and I'm like that's pretty impressive at how bad I did like you have to be trying well I I was trying I did terrible so even like on certain things like that, I have to remind myself, like, it's just a game. My gosh, it's okay to lose and bowling, <laughs> you know, get over it. But there's been times where I've like legitimately quit at bowling. I was like, I'm not playing anymore. Someone can bowl the rest of my game. Done. <laughs> That's what I would do. I know I, I, I admire your drive because I, I freaking hate bowling because I suck at it. Like I always say it's like, it's trashy. I'm not bowling, but it's really because I suck <laughs> I uh, hey, I played a kickball game like I don't know I had to fill in on my cousin's kickball team you know um 
and this is like two years ago and I, I love kickball and I got mm-hmm. so mad at myself because like someone kicked the ball to me and I should have caught it. Well, I didn't catch it. So I, they didn't get out and I was so pissed, you know, I'm like, what the hell's wrong with you? You should have caught that. I mean, I could not get over it. And everybody else is like, it's fine. It's not a big deal. <laughs> two years later, pretty- Brooke is still upset. <laughs> I, two years later, I'm still mad. My junior year of high school. Oh my God. Go my senior year of high school. Sorry. Go. In in high school, um, there was this like boys' school that had like this this dodgeball tournament, and they would ask you know people to uh, girls to like be on their team, and you know I'm this this person that everyone looks like as at, at as this great athlete and everything, and like I say, I'm like I, I'm like I am not going to be bad at anything because I'm just gonna you know do what I have to do to be good at it. Well, <laughs> they're so excited to have me on their dodgeball team. I go in, like, I have the ball. I think I throw it so hard. And this guy just, like, catches it, like, right away. And I'm out, like, immediately. And I still think about it. I'm like, God damn it. Like, I'm so embarrassed. I'm still embarrassed. But no one else cared. But I cared. I was like, I was supposed to be the star of this team. Mm. (laughs) How often do you guys have people handing you things like, hey, can you do this? You're strong. Yes, all the time. Hey, can you help me move? Hey, can you take me to the airport? It's all, it's like, those are the two questions that we get. Tiffany and I always laugh about. Can you take us to the airport? That's one. And can you help us move? That's the other. Are you kidding? What are they having to carry to the airport? Like, why are they picking you? <laughs> Apparently, because we're, we have like an ample amount of time or we're flexible. I don't know. But that is such a common question we get. And I'm like, have you guys heard of Uber or just driving yourself? um but yeah that's like one of the things definitely um can you help us move or can, no no we do this all day we're not right no. I lift today I'm tired no yeah right like um um oh this is a gym etiquette thing but my biggest pet peeve is people leaving their I was at the gym on Thanksgiving and somebody had trained chest and like there was like literally a bench still set up like people left weights like people ugh, people oh, not putting yeah. their weights away leg press are you kidding me mm-hmm. right like like 14 plates mm-hmm. You're like, that's what I wanted to do before I got started <laughs> with my workout right I'm like it's cool that that you could move that with your legs but you should yeah. also be able to pick it up and put it back with your like arms it's more <laughs> impressive if you re-rack your weights oh yeah, yeah. women the guys don't, I swear. Guys are the worst. Yep. Yeah. They are. Yeah. They are. I think, I think it's gotten better in our gym because if you've met Tiffany or, you know, if you ever meet her, um, you don't want to piss her off. That's, that's what I always say. Like, she's not the one to piss off. So uh, <laughs> I think people are like more careful around here because they're, they don't want to piss her off because she will have a word with them. So, but yeah, guys are definitely the freaking worst. There are some the- they'll be like, you'll be like, uh, you know, if I feel confrontational, I'll be like, are you done with that? And they're like, oh yeah, you can use it. I'm like, if I feel confrontational, <laughs> but then it's like, okay, but you need to remove your weights. Right. Like, they're, they're like, oh, you want me to help you get that? It's like, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, yep. We can put them away together. <laughs> team project <laughs> right the faster i can get you out of here though so yeah exactly so I- <gasps> oh that suit oh, oh i love it it's there? so american of you so american yeah i know it, it was like it was a day for like spirit day and of course i i dressed like that Mary. i went to school like that if you still have that could you like bring that back for like a photo shoot I think that's I, think I that totally cool. I got rid of it but I can totally get another oh my I mean there's got to be some American flags out there I think I had an American flag bathing suit too I actually have two <laughs> years of this same outfit <gasps> yes. I love it. awesome oh baby Brooke, that's awesome. like your favorite aren't you you have tons of American flag oh um, my god it's... yes I like I'm pro-America like I'm <laughs> that is me I'm totally that person you know, like, uh, what is that? I, I love South Park, you know? And so I like always quote South Park. I'm like, I thought this is America, you know? Like I always do. 
so I'm pretty cheesy, but yes, I've got an awesome American flag bikini that I ordered off of Amazon. Yeah. It's not in China, but. Right. Oh, there. the irony of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Off of Amazon. Stars or something. It doesn't have all the stars. One of the uh, pages that I follow was like, if you, you can only do one exercise for the rest of your life, what would it be? And I was like, I don't have to choose because this is America. <laughs> <laughs> Good comeback. I would have said laying on my back. <laughs> no? You would have said what? Laying on my back. <laughs> That's a, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a yoga pose. I do that one a lot. That's what I always I always go to Shavasana and hot yoga. That's like my go-to. I'm like, ah, oh, too much. I can't do it. Fifteen minutes to lay on my back. Do you do yoga? Well, I don't go to sleep there. Kira, do you uh do you do yoga regularly? Um yeah, I started doing it in like the last month. I've started doing it like twice a week. Nice. Actually, left my name. Um, but I will. I will only do hot yoga because uh, I don't have the attention span anyway. So the heat kind of keeps me in there. I don't know why, but <laughs> I do. I like doing it. And then um, I have quite a few like clients that I brought with me, and so they come and do yoga with me. And yeah, it's just fun. It's like you know, I'm not necessarily good at it, but I don't really care. It's not what I'm trying to be. But sometimes you know back bends come up I'm like yeah I got that I got that you know and then I see all these other people they're like you know basically doing like a you know a stationary flip and I'm like what who are these people and how do they get into this oh my god I don't know they, it's, it's especially when have. it's not all they have it's probably even instructors <laughs> it's, well some are instructors anyway yeah so I do like it yes <laughs> you to say that you're not like Brooke because Brooke wouldn't do it because she's like if she's not good at it you're like I'm not good at it it's fine oh. and like bowling I don't care I suck at bowling too but I don't really care because I always like my my thumbs are fat so like the ball would get stuck on my thumb and so then like I'd throw it across the I'm being on it <laughs> Tiffany, Tiffany's trying to call me out here no, she says I suck at everything I don't though <laughs> rude anyway <laughs> yeah Brooke uh, and Melissa, do you guys do yoga at all? I do every once in a while. I don't do it as much as I should, mm. as much as, but I actually do enjoy it. Um, it's more of like a, a mental exercise, I guess, for me. Um, yeah. I When I do go, there's this really great instructor and she's like so soothing. Her voice is so soothing, you know, mm-hmm. and for whatever reason, it's just like, really really rewarding for me mentally you know I'm not very good I'm fairly flexible but like there's some balance poses that I'm like falling all over the place you know <laughs> and I'm like why can't I do this I don't know why I can't balance on one leg but it's, not yeah. strong <laughs> it's that one with the um like you cross your leg over and you kind of look into a half squat yes okay. so I laugh because I was really good at that and that was my first I did my first yoga like it was a few months ago and the lady was like, are you sure you've never done this before? And I was thinking, I was like, I squat though. And I, you know, <laughs> how you squat over a toilet so you don't touch it. It's very similar. <laughs> uh-huh. I'd agree. <laughs> yeah. Except, except for the one leg thing. Yeah. I, I used to do, um, I, in, in high school, I had friends who did it pretty regularly and I, I went a few times a month probably. Yeah. Um, but then once I really started like bodybuilding, I, I didn't do that, but I'm the same way. I, I, I go in there and I expect to be really good at it. <laughs> and like, I, I haven't, I taught myself how to do a split when I was like eight. And I just like expect to like still have that same flexibility all the time. And like, I can still get into a split. It's not easy. Like I used to like do cartwheels and like land in it. I can't do that right now without probably straining something. But if I'm going to do yoga, I'm going to be good at it. Right. So I'm like waiting for the right time. <laughs> waiting for the right time to be able to improve. We all yeah. have that drive. Like that's yeah. the thing is we all have that drive. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm going to be freaking good at this if I do something. But like for me, I'm like, if I'm not, I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm not doing, nobody will see me do this again. <laughs> Well, pickleball. I'm gonna say is pickleball. 
<laughs> it's sometimes so. So like I've gone, I love group exercise classes. So like I teach group exercise and I just have always been that person. Um, but I'll go take group exercise classes or I'll go to like a personal trainer sometimes. I'm like, now listen, just be <laughs> in shape. Like, don't try to kill me. Like my kind of in shape is different than whatever this class is. You know what I mean? Because I think sometimes, well, I had like a diva moment a few years ago and I was like shooting in California and this like CrossFit coach was like, I swear to you, he was on an ego trip and I felt like he was like trying to hurt me. And I walked out of the workout because I'm like, I'm not used to this kind of training. And here you are, like, you're trying to prove a point, you know, like I, and I just walked out, walked out, see you later. And it yeah. just like rubbed me the wrong way. So like, anytime I've ever gone to like a class or whatever the case may be, I always feel like I have to tell people just because I look like I'm in shape doesn't mean I'm in shape for this particular exercise. Mm -hmm. In like, I am in shape because I'm based off of what I do on a regular basis. But like, if I was going to go out and run a marathon, I would be like huffing and puffing, throwing up on the street. Like I'm not used to that kind of training, you know? So I do feel like sometimes I have to reiterate to people like, my yeah. in shape is different than maybe what this kind of style of training you know the people people see our kind of our kind of in shape and they think that it translates to everything because that's mm -hmm. like what is portrayed in like cartoons as like ideal you know the strong person and everything but if you look at the elite people in any I mean, kind of sport, totally different bodies for yeah, totally different training different eating all of it so like no it doesn't translate and then like there is that pressure I definitely feel that when I'm doing other types of uh exercise activity I feel pressure that I need to really excel at it because I should because mm -hmm. I look this way my body is capable of this but like no. you put more pressure on yourself to perform right I'll yeah. do you know, some group exercise classes and I'm like huffing and puffing. And it's like, I've been lifting eight pound dumbbells and I'm over there like profusely sweating. And people are like, man, you're really winded. I'm like, God forbid I'm breathing a little heavy. <laughs> you know? You're like defensive and it's like, <laughs> no, they're just kidding. But here I am. I'm like, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> like I was on the Olympia stage. Shall we, let's talk about that a little bit. But then, you know, <laughs> in your defense, like we, everything that we do, I imagine this goes for you guys too. It's like, you make it hard. Yes. Like no matter what it is, you're gonna do it correct and you're gonna make it hard. Yeah, absolutely. And so you might not be the best at it. It might suck. You might be tired, but at least you're doing it right and you're putting effort in. Yeah. You start off right off the bat, pushing yourself to try to be really good like rather yeah. than maybe taking a step back and seeing if, if it's something that you can do or not. When I, when I first was working for, I was working for a private clean, cleaning company before I worked for my own. And like, they would have that with the broom handles, they would adjust and open up and they would get stuck. And they'd be like, here, here, Deborah, can you? And I'm like, these are show muscles. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> it's like I'm one. stronger than you. <laughs> certainly not with my grip strength <laughs> you know, like, right like can you open this no, no. <laughs> you know I'm like I still I have one of these like you can buy them off Amazon they're like a little it's like a silicone pad to open mm -hmm. jars mm -hmm. it's um, amazing like I got one from I don't know it was like a heating and cooling thing they did some electrical work and they drop it off. It had like their address and stuff on it. It was like their little advertising thing. I got that like, I don't know, 10 years ago. And it's in my drawer with my pot holders. Like anytime I can't get anything open, I'm like, I have to get out this stupid grippy thing. <laughs> like, I don't my need mom. a fan. Mm -hmm. Those are great. <laughs> They're nice. Oh my gosh. Well, Very handy. you guys, um, oh, you know what? I wanted to ask you a question. Okay. Do any of you emotional or stress eat? Is that a problem like that you've had to like work on? I'm just curious. Or are you one of the type of people that like don't eat when you're stressed because then I hate you? <laughs> right. mm. I've never had an issue with my appetite since I was a kid. I can eat like a horse, you know? So 
I, if I am stressed out, I, for whatever reason, that's my emotional support. I'm like, oh, what can I eat? Nothing. I can't eat. You know what I mean? So I've gotten better, you know, now, especially, but that's always a go-to for me. Why? I have no idea. I wish I was the type that's like, oh, I'm stressed. I'm not going to eat, but that's never been the case. Like there's truly something wrong with me if I cannot eat. I mean, right. Or when people are like, I've been sick and can't do anything or not eating. I'm like, when I'm sick and I'm home, I'm going to eat. What are you talking about? (laughs) Who are you? Yeah. Like that's not fair. Yeah. I probably like when I was sick, well, when we had COVID, we didn't eat for three days, but that was because like, I couldn't, we couldn't stand up without getting dizzy. But like outside of that, uh, low battery again. Um, But outside of that, it's like, yeah, I, oh, I eat any opportunity, any, any excuse I have to like eat outside of like a plan, I'll do it. So yeah, for sure. Now, does that have to do with like, I, I, since I learned about this, I think about it a lot. Like when we're eating the six meals a day, regardless of being hungry or not hungry. Yeah. So, so we're not getting those signals and we're not paying attention to the leptin and the ghrelin and all that. And mm-hmm. whether they are there or they're messed up or whatever, we don't pay attention to it. So is that why we can like always eat? Because now food is not connected to hunger or fullness. It's connected to emotion or, or stress, you know, because you, you want it. And also mm-hmm. it doesn't matter if I'm full, I'm going to keep eating. Like if, if I'm not on a plan, you know? I think, I think it's part, yeah, I think it's like an ingrained, like, you know, it's our routine or whatever. So I think it's part of, partly that too. You know, where it's like, oh, well, we, we're used to eating every two hours or whatever. Right. Or it goes from being restricted to when you're mm-hmm. not restricted. It's like, well, now it's a free for all. Right. I'm a, I, right here. Yep. Well, if you're, if you're on plan, then you are fighting those urges, right? Because you mm-hmm. are fighting, like if you're eating when you're, because you're like, you're in your improvement season, you might not necessarily be hungry by the time you eat your next meal. So you're still, you're surpassing what your body is expecting of you. And the same is for when dieting. So I think it's, I think it's honestly separate because I've always been this way. Like I've never, I've just been like, Oh, food, like it, it's more like the bodybuilding lifestyle that makes you think more about the purpose of food rather than um, because I think I would dismiss hunger cues anyways. Like Kira, mm-hmm. you said COVID when we got COVID, that was like the first time. And I don't know how long I probably didn't eat for about a day and a half. And I thought, Oh, I'm actually going to be one of those people that loses weight. And it's like, I've gotten the flu. Mm-hmm. It's never stopped me from eating. Right. That was the first, I guess I had such a massive headache for like three days when we had COVID mm-hmm. and I didn't eat anything, but I, it was only probably it was less than 48 hours. And then I, I totally made up for it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. You have to. So yeah. I just always laugh about the people that are like, you know, they're stressed out and they're like, oh, I lost like six pounds. And I was like, I can't no. get that. Never. You have to distract yourself with something. And isn't that thing mm-hmm. food? Exactly. That's me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like trying to do Guilty. anything. Thing to keep my mind off of it right. mm-hmm. especially if you're a prep you're like those memes that you see it's like you eat and as I'm eating my meal I'm like already hungry for my next meal you know what I mean I'm like <laughs> eat slower yeah. slower like savor every bit of it I mean I I totally have I, I don't know if it's a hunger thing or if it's just like an oral fixation thing like when I'm on prep and I'm not eating a meal I have sugar-free Jolly Ranchers until I'm not allowed to and then I have diet soda and then I have mm-hmm. gum and then I've even, I've gone to nicotine pouches because that, you know, it, that really suppresses my appetite a lot. And it's, <laughs> I know not everyone can do that, um, but oh my God. I have had an issue with it and it's really helpful to me. <laughs> That's, okay. So I used to smoke cigarettes and I even smoked when I first started competing. So, cause I was like, it's an appetite suppressant. Why would I quit now? I don't have to run. My lungs don't have to be that great. I can still do cardio. Um, so I just laugh. That's why I'm laughing about your nicotine patches. I'm like, who the hell would have thought of that? But hey, I did cigarettes. So basically the same thing. Yeah. I, I know people that um, use nicotine or nicotine gum for like, um, uh, <laughs> focus. 
I can't even think of the word. And um, I've actually thought about because I, I'm pretty sure like I could be on like ADHD medication because I am so, yeah, Kara, you're the same. I'm a fidgeter. <laughs> it's so like, I know everybody's probably like, oh my God, who's that crackhead on there? Like, she's just like, not stop. I'm like, I can't help it. I need to like a stress ball or something. I'm always fidgeting. Yeah. So well, I could, I, did you notice that you were able to concentrate more when you used the nicotine or no? The, the patch or the um, I, I use it. So I, I have the pouches that like go in your lip and then I, I have gum. Um, I think those are nicotine patches. I thought those were, that was like chew. Isn't that chew? Like, no, no, the, the, the pouches, pouches. it's like a little yeah. white pouch. You just, mm -hmm. I mean, or if, if you want to chew, I guess you can do the, the actual oh. chew that just sits in your lip. Okay. Um, and then you spit it out after like 45 minutes, but it's not like it doesn't have. Like you can swallow and everything while you have it in. Oh, okay. Um, it's just like a, a white pouch with powder in it. Okay. And I guess you slowly absorb the powder. Um, but I, my intent for using it was, is satiation. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess, I mean, kind of, because like, if I'm thinking about food then I'm not focused, so I guess in turn, yes, it, it does help with mm -hmm. focus. Um, but I mean, it's, it's really helpful for, for appetite. I originally Shelby recommended it to me a couple years ago during cardio when I was like, you know, really deep into prep, um, and kind of starving all the time. Uh, he was, and, and I was doing fasted cardio. Uh, so I would chew a piece of the nicotine gum with a piece of regular gum for my entire session. And it was really helpful. And I guess, yeah, that does help me focus because yeah. not thinking about how starving I am. Yeah. Okay, we're not recommending this just so people know like this, but it was funny that you said it because like I know when I first got into following bodybuilding I knew a ton of guys that did um gum or chew or whatever when they were getting into prep because it does help with appetite suppressant now we're gonna have all these people go out and buy nicotine <laughs> if you have an addictive personality don't do it I can do yeah. things and then just stop when I don't need to anymore you know yeah but some people can I think I think we've now figured out that there are people out there who do, who do a lot of what I would consider worse things I guess you know to each their own but like I've learned over the years like the way that some girls have gotten through preps and stuff I'm like holy how who gave you that idea and I mean it's not healthy I mean, shit, I was, I smoked for years when I first started competing. So that's not healthy. Um, but there are other things that people do just to get through the prep that I'm like, uh, maybe you should reconsider doing mm -hmm. this because I mean, it's like, it goes above and beyond what we're talking about, but you know, yeah. those are like, I've had, I mean, I've had people tell me they've done illicit drugs and I'm like, what? Like party drugs. I'm like, you kidding? Like, I'm just, I feel like I'm so naive sometimes, but I know that that stuff happens. And mm -hmm. sometimes I think that we get into that, like, anything we'll do any you know we're gonna like go the extra mile we go you know the extreme but um yeah I mean no of course we're not recommending it but um yeah I think there's people out there who definitely probably do some worse things than that so because bodybuilding is not health well <laughs> yeah when you see some of the um the some of the protocols and stuff that people are doing then it really opens your eyes you know and obviously we've had you know, the past year we had quite a few um, deaths mm -hmm. from that, which was a big deal. So yeah, Melissa, like you said, it's not healthy. And I mean, the point of this is to find what you're willing to do and what your level mm -hmm. of health is. And if you're interested in competing, um, you know, I think it, it, it's, it's a lot of work. And I think you guys are all great at, you know, being representatives of the fact of, you know, we put in a lot of work, we don't do it perfectly. We don't try to, you know, like, even if you have a binge, you don't try to undo it. You just keep going and you move forward. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of really great advice that the regular average person can take to heart if they're trying to get healthy, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Always do your research. That's yeah. Right. And then, you know, a lot of people are going to disagree even though it's not an argument it's just a statement that, like I might do something or you might do something people disagree with it and then I mean I have with my mom with like a tanning bed you know like like she doesn't like that I tan and was like I can't respect that and I'm like okay well it's a reward 
I'm an adult. Yeah. I have evaluated the risks and the rewards and decided that to me, it's worth the reward. To you, it's not. <laughs> Simple as that. I like and, tanning. And, me and too. Like that said, I do understand the risks. It's not like I'm mm-hmm. unaware, you know? Right. That I think that goes with a lot of this stuff. Yeah. yeah I it's okay to disagree, you know? Yeah. I don't know why it's always an issue. Like people feel like everybody has to be on the same page or mm-hmm. my way the correct way for everybody. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's couldn't be further from the truth. Everybody has their ways, things that work mm-hmm. for them, fine. And I obviously think that maybe some people are willing to do a little bit more than others. But just like Melissa said, bodybuilding isn't general health and wellness. So if this is something that you want to get into, do your research. Like make mm-hmm. sure you're really aware that these people that are stepping on stage, they're not doing it for general health and wellness. It's like one dream, you know? So I try to remind that to people all the time that are wanting to come and compete, you know? Um, I obviously love competing and I'll recommend it to anybody, but I always try to be real realistic as well and tell mm-hmm. people to do their own research because it's not, people see like the glitz and the glam the stage shows, you know? And I'm like, that's great, but you don't see everything else that has it, that person has gone through to get to that point mm-hmm. and just because they look really healthy doesn't mean that they are <laughs> yep exactly and, and people think they have a goal of stepping on stage and their goal is to look like they do on stage after they step off of stage and it's like that's why like especially people who are like my age you know, Kiro, you're almost the same age, close to the same age as me. You know, I think about that when you get like women in their forties who all of a sudden they just like, they've been training for a short period of time. Oh, I want to go do a bodybuilding competition. And it's like, no, you want to look fit and healthy all the time. That's what you really want, you know? Mm -hmm. And that is a much better goal than to drop 30 pounds to step on stage and then gain yeah. pounds back, you know, you that's not going to make you, you're not going to be happy about your accomplishment when you undo it in the next month mm-hmm. and a half, because this is a lifestyle competing is a lifestyle that you need to be committed to for, I think years and years rather than, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, that, that trickles down to women, my age, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's exciting fitness is trendy you get into lifting in one way or another um you know it's great you lift now and now you like going to the gym you like posting that you go to the gym and maybe not maybe some people just like it themselves but then you enjoy that and then the next step like the same way that like the different divisions of women's bodybuilding are Mm -hmm. not steps same with like what you go to the gym for Like you don't, it's not like, okay, I'm doing bikini now. I'm going to do figure then physique. Maybe if that's, you know, if that's actually what's happening for you, if your body is sculpting that way, but like same with the gym, you don't, you know, you start doing cardio, then you start lifting weights. Now you're going six times a day. Now you're a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. It's not, now you're competing. It's, it doesn't have to, it's not the rules, you know? Right. Right. And it's okay to not compete. Like, yes. I mean, I tell, I have that conversation seriously, like on a weekly basis with people, like just like Melissa, trendy is like my favorite word because I swear fitness is trendy. You know, you mm-hmm. see everybody and it's kind of like all the girls and guys kind of have like the same demeanor, their check-ins, they got to get that like tag in on Facebook, Instagram, you know what I mean? And like to each their own, I'm not like downing anybody that does that, but in the same sense, I'm like, do it for you. Like don't do it as it is trendy or you're trying to get likes or more followers or, you know, attention, Mm -hmm. do it for yourself because yeah, because you do like the way it makes you look or because the way it makes you feel, or it gives you just a a good goal. You feel good seeing your body change or seeing your strength increase, you know? But I think a lot of times people, they're not even interested in that. It's like, got my workout in, duck lips, you know? And I'm like, well, I saw you working out and you really weren't working out, but what, you know what I mean? Like, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. That's huge now. That's a big thing. I yeah. think, you know, all of us started with, um, 
because we, we found joy in training, you know what I mean? And I would just, I mean, that would be my encouragement is to find joy in training there or, you know, in whatever you love to do, but there are so many lifelong benefits to training. And there's so many ways to, um, evolve training with your, you know, your life as it evolves. And, if you can learn, you know, learn how to do that and incorporate it. I just think it's going to be like the best thing that you have added to your life. You know, if you can focus more on not just the aesthetics of it and instead like how it makes you feel and, you know, those like internal things, I think you're more likely to have one success, but you're also more likely to have longevity in fitness and health period, because you're not just on what you look like which in my opinion is how it should be, you know, all those things can come along and they will come along as, you know, as you get more confident with it. But I think the internal is much more important than the external when you first start. Which is why it's so important to find a type of training that you enjoy, which may not be the type of training that is required to compete. Right. Right. All sculpts a different type of body. Mm -hmm. And you might not like, how it feels like you might absolutely dread isolated training mm-hmm. you know? yeah so exactly if you're going to stick to it find the kind that you enjoy yeah 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 <laughs> oh amazing well you guys i don't got anything else what else you got anything i got nothing <laughs> curious <laughs> like you got dogs. So i got dogs <laughs> I got dogs. Oh, I think I'm going to take a nap today. Oh, great. Well, let's all go home, <laughs> go home and nap and work on our finances. I'm actually, I'm training, I'm training legs today. Is anybody training today? I did, I did it. this morning and calves. You did? Yeah. yeah. Maybe some cardio <laughs> later if I get there. Off day off day. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, we just want to encourage everybody as they're getting started on their goals for this year to not quit. You know, I think that if you don't quit, we've all had these moments where it's just, everything has just gone to shit. You know what I mean? Or you've had to take breaks. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I've had to take full, like almost a year off because of injuries or things going on with family and, you know, just don't quit. I think that's the key to being successful in your goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So, all right. Well, everybody have a really great day. Of course, you too. Healthy looks, what is the healthy looks different on everybody? That's, that's our, that's our catchphrase. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Have a great day.